Okay, so I've previously talked about using floppy disks to transfer files from your PC to your ST, um, but you can also use RS-232 or serial cables, and I've got one here. Um, but before we start, let's talk about what cables you actually need to buy to do this yourself. Um, so the ST, taking a look at the back here, the ST serial port uses a 25-pin a male D-sub connector. And this is a bit unconventional, because if I take a, a look at an old PC, at the more traditional serial connector, you can see this uses a 9-pin a connector. So to be able to transfer files to the ST, we're going to want a 25-pin female to 9-pin female serial connector. So that's what I've got just here. So you can see on this end, this is going to go into the ST. We've got a 25-pin female connector. And then on the end that's going into the PC, we have a 9-pin female connector. So I'm going to plug this up now. So let's take this back of the ST. Yeah, this way around. So that's into the ST. I'm going to take the other end. This is going to go into the PC. So there's a 9 pin connector. There we go. So these are plugged together. These are ready for file transfer. Um, but there's one more thing I'm going to mention. There's, there's another thing in play, which is most modern PCs don't actually have even a 9 pin serial connector. They don't have one of these. Um, so to be able to plug your ST up to a more modern PC, you're going to want another thing, which is just over here. So this is a, a serial to USB adapter cable. So you can see here it's got a 9-pin connector, and here we've got a, a USB. Um, so if you have a modern PC, you would take the 9-pin end from your serial cable, you would plug it into the adapter cable here, and then you would take the USB and you plug that into your PC. Done. Ready for transfer. Now I'm going to jump over to the PC and turn this on and we can get ready to transfer files. Okay, so we've got the PC and the ST hooked up via serial cable. Um, and in this case, I've also used the USB to serial adapter that I just mentioned. Um, so I've got the ST up and running over here in the top right um, and the PC desktop occupying the rest of the screen. Um, so time to transfer some files. So first, we need to download a few things, which I've already done, um, and I'll put the links for these in the comments below. Um, so first we have Ghost Link. Um, so this is the program that we're going to use to actually transfer the files. Um, and looking at the directory just here, um, it consists of two programs. Um, we have ST Master Program. Um, so this is a memory resident program, which we're going to run on the ST. Um, to turn one of our drive letters into a serial port connection. And secondly, we have pcslave.exe, um, and this is a program that we run on the PC to serve the files down the serial cable to the ST. Um, so as we start to sort through these files, let's create two folders, um, one for the files that we need on the ST, and another one for the files that we need on the PC. So we've got files for PC up here and files for ST down here and as we already mentioned we need this PC slave program we need that on the PC and ST master we need that on the ST so going back um, the next program is X control um, so this is a useful accessory we can use on the ST to adjust our serial port settings um, and make sure that the file transfer works as quickly as it can without causing errors. Um, so for that, this needs to be running on a ST. So I'm going to take X control UK because I've got a UK Atari ST and I'm going to take the modem control panel because that contains our serial settings. So those go into the files for ST folder. 
back again. So the third thing we have is DOSBox. Um, so since GhostLink is quite an old program, um, it doesn't play nice with the new versions of Windows. So we can use DOSBox, which is a DOS emulator, um, to run GhostLink uh, without any trouble. Um, I'm going to come back to how we actually configure and run this in a minute, um, but for now let's move on. So lastly, we need a program to actually copy across down the serial cable from the PC to the ST and then run. Um, so I've downloaded this small demo and I've called it stdemo.program um, and we're going to put this in our files on the PC folder and then later on we'll transfer it across using the serial cable. Okay, so now we've got these files all together, um, we need to get these few files, these essentials, across to the ST in a conventional way. Um, unfortunately, we can't use a, a serial cable just yet um, because we need these files over there before we can use the serial cable connection. Um, so I'm going to do this in a conventional way. I'm going to use a floppy disk. Um, so let's bring up my A drive because I have a pre-prepared floppy disk already. Um, so one thing I will ha add um, is there's a bit of an art to this. Um, so I'll link to a previous video I've done on transferring files from PC to ST via floppy disk and I'll link that in the comments below as well. But for now, let's get these, drag them across. Okay, copy done. So I'll eject the disk, pop it in the ST and reboot so we can load up this control panel. So the ST is rebooting just now. And let's make sure we can see the files. So I'll double click the A drive. Great. And we've got these three files. These are the ones we need. So first thing, let's check the ST's serial port settings. So I'm going to go desk, control panel. And great. We've got the modem set up here. So I'm going to click this. And let's take a look at the settings. So we've got a board rate of 19,200. Um, you could try faster, um, but this is the, the fastest I could get it to work reliably. Parity as none, bits for character as eight, stop bits as one, and flow control as none. So let's just men make a mental note of these settings because we will need to remember them for the, the PC configuration in a minute. But for now, I'll just press OK. Close down the control panel. So the second thing is we need to configure and run our ST master program. So this is our um, file transfer, our file transfer host program. Um, but it doesn't work well in ST low resolution. It works well in ST medium. So I'm going to go options, set preferences and switch to ST medium res. Okay, great. Running ST master. Great. So you can see I'm going to remove this default setting and click add. And it asks me what drive do you want to use locally on your ST and what drive do you want to connect to on your PC? So I'm going to select, select C and press OK and then install. And it looks like nothing happened, but it actually did. Um, this is memory resident now, and our ST is ready to start receiving files from the PC. So I'll switch back to the PC over here, and remember I mentioned DOSBox. Um, so before I configure DOSBox, the first thing I need to do is I need to check a serial port settings on my PC. So I'm going to hit the Windows key and open up Device Manager. Remember I said that we're using a USB to serial adapter? So Windows will have allocated our serial adapter a, a real COM port. So if I go down here to ports, open this up, and you can see USB serial port on COM3. So this means that Windows has allocated our, our serial connection a COM port of COM3. If I just double click on here, we need to check the settings. 
port settings and just verify that these are the same as what we've got set on the ST. So we've got 19,200. Yeah, and all the others are the same. So we press OK to that and just remember this, COM3. So now we need to configure DOSBox. So DOSBox creates its own config file inside your Windows profile. So for me, that's C users gym. Yours will be different. Your username will be different. App data local DOSBox. And I'm going to open this with Notepad++. So if you scroll down and make sure you get to the serial section here, um, what you need to set is you need to tell DOSBox um, that you want to use a real serial port on its internal COM port 1. So we say serial 1 inside DOSBox is a direct serial connection and I want to use a real port and COM3 is the real port we want to use. And the reason we know this is we just checked in Device Manager, COM3. So I save this, close the config file, and I can actually run DOSBox. So I double click this, I fire it up, and I make sure, just in the diagnostic window here, that this COM3 has been mapped correctly. So it says Serial 1 opening COM3. So that looks good. Um, so inside DOSBox here, the next thing I need to do is remember those files. Remember those files I want to make available on my PC, the PC slave and this program I actually want to transfer. We need to mount this inside DOSBox. So I type mount as my C drive, C temp, copy files via ghost link. This is this path down here, backslash files for PC, enter. So that's now been mounted as drive C. And if I switch to drive C and type DIR to list out the contents, I can see we've got pcslave.exe. So that's our PC client for GhostLink. And we've also got stdemo, that's the file we want to transfer. So if I run PC Slave, enter, it says, OK, great, I'm running. Um, but it says the current settings are to use 57,600 board. Um, so that's much too fast for reliable transfer, at least in my experience anyway. Um, so you can use the F keys, F1 to F10, to set the speed. So let's just try this. There we go, 19,200 that matches exactly um, what we have on the ST. So now we've done that, I'm going to go back to the ST over here, and I'm going to switch back to ST low resolution so it's easier to see. Okay, great. So if I click on the A drive here, I need to mount, I need to map my Z drive, which is what I previously told ST Master or told GhostLink I would use as my drive to transfer files across. So I click on A here and I go Options, Install Disk Drive. I put Z and as a, as a name I'm going to use GhostLink Install. So it's created me this new drive. If I double click here, you can see over here on the PC side, there's some activity. So it said, okay, I'm listing out a directory and the files in that directory are PC slave and ST demo. And here you go, you can see them on the ST side. So you can see that communication's working well. And what I'm gonna do with this ST demo is I'm gonna copy it across down the serial cable from our mapped Z drive onto the floppy disk, onto the ST. So copy files, number of files one, okay. And back over here, we can see that the files being transferred down the serial cable in chunks. So 4K, 8K, 12K, 16K, and then I'm done. Because this is a small file, it's only 20K. Obviously, larger files will take longer, but you can watch the activity and make sure it's working.
So that's done. So over on the ST side, let's double click on ST demo and let's make sure it actually works. Great, looks good. So that's it, a successful file transfer and I'll leave you to watch the demo for a little while and leave any questions in the comments below. Thank you very much.